you are listening to the Bitter Medicine Podcast on KWAZ Radio. Welcome to the Bitter Medicine Podcast, where it's all about black empowerment. Our show focuses on black news and entertainment, arts, science, economics, history, people, and strategies that uplift, empower, and motivate Africans within the diaspora. And now, your host, whose favorite color is black, Goku. Welcome back to the Bitter Medicine Podcast. This is your host, Koku. Um, pleasure to be able to broadcast to you guys today. It's been a little while. Um, I wanted to talk about something going on in the news that, on one hand, it is getting um, a lot of, you know, uh, newsworthiness or, 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 or it is being talked about in the news. But on the other hand, it's kind of not being talked about in the same way that we've seen similar stories be discussed in the media. And what we want to talk about today is Harvey Weinstein, the uh, Hollywood producer, some will call him the very powerful uh, Hollywood producer. Harvey Weinstein has been uh, exposed as having paid off sexual harassment accusers for decades now. And there's a few glaring things about the case. Now, for you guys whose head is not in the bubble, who is woke, who are conscious black folks, you guys, this will be like preaching to the choir. You guys are, are aware and familiar with the fact that the media treats white folks different than they treat black folks, especially when it's, uh, white men who are affluent, they get treated much differently than a, a black man does. Take, for example, Donald Trump talking about grabbing women by the pussy was just kind of smoothed over as, you know, locker room talk. That's just boys being boys. Meanwhile, Donald Trump is a 70-year-old old man. Okay? He's in his 70s. And now he's the president of the United States um, with the election being after the fact that those recordings were released with him saying those disgusting things about grabbing women by the pussy and imposing himself upon women. But I want to read to you with some commentary of my own. I want to read to you the New York Times article that came out the other day that revealed uh, what was going on with Harvey Weinstein? It's an article by Jody Cantor and Megan Tuhe. I think that's how you pronounce the name. So before I begin reading this, I just want to state that this is for fair use. Um, we just want to use this for commentary. So here's how the article begins. Two decades ago, the Hollywood producer Harvey Weinstein invited Ashley Judd to the Peninsula Beverly Hills Hotel for what the young actress expected to be a business breakfast meeting. Instead, he had her sent up to his room, where he appeared in a bathrobe and asked if he could give her a massage or she could watch him shower, she recalled in an interview. How do I get out of the room as fast as possible without alienating Harvey Weinstein, Miss Judd said she remembers thinking. In 2014, Mr. Weinstein invited Emily Nestor, who had worked just one day as a temporary employee to the same hotel and made another offer. If she accepted his sexual advances, he would boost her career, according to accounts she provided to colleagues who sent them to Weinstein Company executives. The following year, once again at the peninsula, a female assistant said Mr. Weinstein badgered her into giving him a massage while he was naked, leaving her crying and very distraught, wrote a colleague. Lauren O'Connor, in a searing memo asserting sexual harassment and other misconduct by their boss. 
There is a toxic environment for women at this company, Ms. O'Connor said in the letter, addressed to several executives at the company run by Mr. Weinstein. An investigation by the New York Times found previously undisclosed allegations against Mr. Weinstein stretching over nearly three decades, documented through uh, interviews with current and former employees and film industry workers, as well as legal records, emails, and internal documents from the businesses he has run, Miramax and the Weinstein Company. During that time, after being confronted with allegations, including sexual harassment and unwanted physical contact, Mr. Weinstein has reached at least eight settlements with women, according to two company officials speaking on the condition of anonymity. Among the recipients, the Times found were a young assistant in New York in 1990, an actress in 1997, an assistant in London in 1998, an Italian model in 2015, and Miss O'Connor shortly after, according to records and those familiar with the agreements. In a statement to the Times on Thursday afternoon, Mr. Weinstein said, I appreciate the way I've behaved with colleagues in the past has caused a lot of pain, and I sincerely apologize for it. Though I'm trying to do better, I know I have a long way to go. Let me repeat what Weinstein, Harvey Weinstein said in a statement to the New York Times on Thursday afternoon. Mr. Weinstein said, I appreciate the way I've behaved with colleagues in the past has caused a lot of pain, and I sincerely apologize for it. Though I'm trying to do better, I know I have a long way to go. Let that sit for a minute. He added that he was working with therapists and planning to take a leave of absence to deal with his issue head on. Lisa Bloom, a lawyer advising Mr. Weinstein, said in a statement that he denies many of the accusations as patently false. In comments to the Times earlier this week, Mr. Weinstein said that many claims in Ms. O'Connor's memo were off base and that they had parted on good terms. We're going to talk about Lisa Bloom in just a minute. Um, it's interesting that Lisa Bloom had that to say. He and his representatives declined to comment on any of the settlements, including providing information about who paid them. But Mr. Weinstein said that in addressing employee concerns about workplace issues, my motto is to keep the peace. Harvey Weinstein's motto is to keep the peace. Now, I want you guys to pay attention to the things that we uh, focus on or repeat. Because it's very interesting how white society deals with things and allows things to kind of go unspoken. Continuing with the article, Ms. Bloom, who has been advising Mr. Weinstein over the last year on gender and power dynamics, called him an old dinosaur learning new ways. She said she had explained to him that due to the power difference between a major studio head like him and most uh, most others in the industry, whatever his motives, some of his words and behaviors can be perceived as inappropriate, even intimidating. That's Lisa Bloom. Continuing the article, Though Mrs. O'Connor had been writing only about a two-year period, her memo echoed other women's complaints. Mr. Weinstein required her to have casting discussions with aspiring actresses after they had private appointments in his hotel room. She said her description matching those of other former employees. She suspected that she and other female Weinstein employees, she wrote, were being used to facilitate liaisons with vulnerable women who hope he will get them work. The allegations piled up even as Mr. Weinstein helped define popular culture. He has collected six Best Picture Oscars, turned out a number of touchstones from 
the film Sex, Lies, and Videotape, Pulp Fiction, Goodwill Hunting, to the television show Project Runway. In public, he presents himself as a liberal lion, a champion of women, and a winner of not just artistic, but humanitarian awards. Now, you see what they're doing here with Harvey Weinstein, how they're humanizing him, how they're trying to make it seem like, oh, really, he's a likable person. So they're throwing everything into doubt here. They're casting everything into doubt. They're going back to that, well, he's a good guy. and So basically, you have to, to second-guess accusations by the women. And this is the New York Times doing this. Okay, Let me continue with the article. In 2015, the year Miss O'Connor wrote her memo, his company distributed The Hunting Ground, a documentary about campus sexual assault. A longtime Democratic donor, he hosted a fundraiser for Hillary Clinton in his Manhattan home last year. He employed Malia Obama, the oldest daughter of former President Barack Obama, as an intern this year, and recently helped endow a faculty chair at Rutgers University in Gloria Steinem's name. During the Sundance Film Festival in January, when Park City, Utah held its conversion, oh, sorry, held its version of nationwide women's marches, Mr. Weinstein joined the parade. From the outside, it seemed golden. The Oscars, the success, the remarkable cultural impact, said Mark Gill, former president of Miramax Los Angeles, when the company was owned by Disney. But behind the scenes, it was a mess, and this was the biggest mess of all, he added, referring to Mr. Weinstein's treatment of women. Let me pause from the article for a second here. Once again, they list all the good things he's done. And we're used to this now. Recently, uh, the Las Vegas shooter, I forgot his name now, but they spoke of him almost like they were writing a profile for him for eHarmony. He liked to do this, he liked to do that, he was a nice guy. Meanwhile, his whole family history is a history of, of criminals. His father was a bank robber, etc. But this is what they do with white criminals. Even the so-called whistleblowers will still paint them in a fair light. We as black folks don't get that. And even though you probably are listening to this like, well, no duh. Uh, of course we don't get it. We know this. What's your point? My point is we as the people need to get on the same kind of code that these people get on. Because the real thing that I'm building up to here in, in what I've been reading so far from the article, and I, I'm not going to read the whole article. Um, I think you get the gist of what the article is about. Uh, the, the, the thing that I'm trying to build up to is the fact that Hollywood largely has been quiet about this thing. One or two little people here have said some, have tweeted something, you know, but nothing big. Now, when you go back to Bill Cosby, everyone and their ma, and some of you listening, agreed with the accusations against Bill Cosby and actually hemmed him up to be guilty once they were, uh, the accusations were levied. So, it's time for you black folks to recognize the war and how the war is being fought. When you're playing the moral compass game and talking about, yeah, he so and such is wrong, like, like with Nate Parker. Nate Parker, some of the, the women that he employed in his movie, The Birth of a Nation, spoke against him. Wasn't it Gabrielle Union? In that movie, and she, she basically denounced him and the movie before it came out because of something he was accused of doing and was found uh, innocent of years before. So when you guys are out here playing this moral compass thing 
and, and trying to point out wrongdoing and, you know, two wrongs don't make a right and all this nonsense. These guys are running game on you left and right. White women support these guys ultimately. They might point it out and make a and make some noise about it, but at the end of the day, most of them are going to side with their with their men. White women side with white men. Donald Trump was voted in by a, a, a majority of white women. Voted Donald Trump in, or helped to vote him in. You see, this goes back to a podcast we did around the time of the Charlottesville stuff. Right? We were talking about the alt right and Richard Spencer. And I have come to respect those guys a lot. Do I like them? No. But I respect their mindset. You see, it's a, it's a mindset that I've developed and I'm trying to pass on to children now, to young people now. Um, get rid of this idea of fairness and start to adopt the mindset of winning. Black people deal in fairness like children. We believe that everything should be 50-50 and equal and this, that, and the other. And that's not how the world is designed right now. It's about winning. And like a friend pointed out to me uh, recently, when the uh, Yankees accused the, um, the Boston Red Sox of stealing signs using a, a, a smart watch or something. Um, there's an old saying that says, if you're not cheating, you're not trying. If you're not cheating, you're not trying. Black folks essentially are not trying. You, you guys are trying to play it fair, trying to call it down the middle, Trying to call a spade a spade. When the people who are dominating you right now, they don't do no such foolishness like that. Even in wrongdoing, even when they, especially their men, white men, are seen as doing something wrong, the women will still, and most of the other men will still, paint a lovely picture as to the character of that person. Meanwhile, you all will call and cause be guilty from the jump. And here's the thing about the Harvey Weinstein situation. Harvey Weinstein, as that article pointed out, and later on there was a little bit more to the article, but I don't feel like reading all of it. You get the idea. As the article pointed out, Harvey Weinstein was pulling this crap with the promise, or at least from the so-called victim's mindset, uh, with the hope of career advancement. As the article points out, when you were dealing with Harvey Weinstein, you were at the nexus of money, fame, and art. Even one of his... um, I guess the most high-profile one of his alleged victims is um, Ashley Judd. The actress Ashley Judd said that when she um, went to have a meeting with him, it ended up being in his hotel room, and he tried many different advances towards her. She said no repeatedly. He tried to get her to watch him take a shower and all this stuff. And at one point in the article... Ashley Judd says, let me see if I could find it, so I could get it right. But at one point in the article, Ashley Judd says, to get out of the room, she said, she quiped that if Mr. Weinstein wanted to touch her, she, she would first have to win an Oscar in one of his movies, she recalled. Feeling panicky, trapped, she said in the interview, There's a a lot on the line, the cachet that came with Miramax. Now listen to what she just said. She said, he could touch or he could play if she got that Oscar 
pay. So this is the thing about Hollywood, and this was something I, I talked about before with Bill Cosby. I don't believe Bill Cosby to be a rapist. Uh, I believe Bill Cosby was one of those black dudes back in the day when it was very popular in Hollywood and stuff to pop pills and have sex and all that kind of stuff. I believe he was a pill popper, and I believe he parlayed sex for favors. And he wasn't the only one. Weinstein and them were doing that too for decades now. And according to what Ashley Judd just said in her quote, she was kind of down for it. Because that's how it works in Hollywood. And I'm not saying that it's a good thing. I'm not saying it's some kind of honorable thing. But what I am saying is that it's understood in Hollywood that you play for pay. And this is why Hollywood, especially may not it's a Harvey Weinstein, a white man with affluence, this is why Hollywood is largely not saying anything. Like I said, a few people have, you know, denounced Weinstein. And a a lot of those white folks who are denouncing Weinstein, they kind of had to because they went hard at Bill Cosby. Judd Apatow, who I used to like. I used to like his films, and I stopped fucking with Judd Judd Apatow after he started doing those stand-up routines, mocking Bill Cosby, calling him a rapist, and all that stuff. Lena Dunham from his show, Girls. Um, I stopped messing with them because of the way they went hard against Cosby. So they had to say a little something against Weinstein. And they did. Right? But but, but best believe uh, Hollywood largely is keeping quiet because Hollywood knows. You know how many people in Hollywood were... Dealing, especially dealing with these young, beautiful women and stuff. How many people were pushing to have sex and sexual favors to advance people's careers with a snap of a finger? And again, it's some dirtbag type stuff. I'm not condoning it, but what I'm telling you is white society understands it and accepts it. Black folks with their morality issues come and they will denounce their own mother, their own father, their own selves, their own people over some morality. And you need to understand that that's not how this game is going to be played if you want to have any kind of uh, uh, so-called equality. You have to play, you have to fight the way these guys are fighting. If you're in a war, Remember back in the day, war used to be you line up on two sides. You shoot it out. And who whoever has the most people standing, that's who won. And then along the, uh, along the years, people started to recognize guerrilla warfare. To hit, move, to hit and hide, to hit and run. But what black folks are doing in this war that we're facing right now is we're still standing in a straight line, loading our weapons, while the other side is fighting with guerrilla tactics. How dumb are we to let things like morality still push us to downing ourselves While the other side doesn't do that, they might admit some wrongdoing, they'll give an apology, and the apology is accepted. And they keep it moving. I'm telling you today, we need to do the same. While these white guys do these egregious acts, the media, mainstream media, the average white person, they still find some way to make these guys look good. I'm going to play a clip of um, this lady, um, what's her name, Sharon Waxman from The Wrap, a blog site. Um, 
Sharon Waxman was on CNN being asked about um, the Harvey Weinstein situation. Let me play a clip of what she had to say. Take a listen. Facing multiple sexual harassment accusations that span 30 years, according to the New York Times. The Times reporting that the Miramax co-founder has reached eight settlements with various accusers. One of the biggest names speaking out, actress Ashley Judd, who, according to the New York Times, said she was sent to Weinstein's hotel room years ago, where he offered her a massage or to watch him shower. In a statement to the Times, Weinstein said in part, quote, I appreciate the way I've behaved with colleagues in the past has caused a lot of pain, and I sincerely apologize for it, though I'm trying to do better. I know I have a long way to go, unquote. He also said he was taking a leave of absence. Joining me now is CEO and founder of the entertainment news site, The Rap, Sharon Waxman. Uh, Sharon, thanks so much for joining us. These accusations span over his career. I guess it's an open secret in Hollywood. How did he get away with it for so long? Well, I think uh, Hollywood has had a very permissive culture for a long time. Harvey Weinstein has been a very powerful figure for a long time, and I think a lot of money was paid to make it go away. But you are right. It has been an open secret in Hollywood for a long time. What do we know about the other women accusing him? Well, I think the one that's most remarkable is this woman, Lauren Collins, who's writ who wrote this memo. Um, I, I will point out, first of all, that I have known Harvey for a very long time. Um, I consider him somebody we cover, but also a friend. But at the same time, in the way that things kind of work in this business, I also did an investigative story for the New York Times about 10 years ago when I covered Hollywood for them. And the story basically got killed. But it was many of the same kinds of things that I discovered uh, in my reporting in Rome, in London. Um, and it ended up being turning a, a different way. And a lot of pressure was applied to not let that story appear. And, you know, a lot, of, a lot of money had been paid over the years, and there are non-disclosure agreements with the women who are involved. So we don't really know a lot of the details. But when you have an, uh, an employer, a former employee, who, who goes on the record and writes a memo and says, this happened to me or this happened to my colleagues and this is not something that's acceptable, um, that's a much more uh, substantive accusation. The other thing that's going on is that the culture has changed, and the culture is not as accepting, um, except, I guess, in the case of our president, who got elected despite going on, going, uh, on, on uh, audio and saying that he grabs women's private parts. But um, it, in general, I would say the culture does not accept this kind of behavior anymore, and women are much more emboldened to speak out, whereas they were afraid to in the past. This is obviously a man who presented himself as a, a progressive champion uh, of women, uh, not the first progressive to be accused of not, uh, not walking the talk uh, when it came to respect uh, for women, uh, but really a glaring hypocrisy. Well, I think he's going to get that from all sides, and I think that people are complicated, and Harvey Weinstein is as complicated as a lot of people. He has voracious appetites across many categories, business, and apparently this one as well. And, you know, he has a beautiful and wonderful wife in Georgina Chapman, who's uh, not only gorgeous but an accomplished uh, businesswoman on her own. So it's complicated. I think that him owning up to it, finally, and taking a leave of absence and saying, recognizing, I need to fix my behavior, uh, is significant. Yeah, but uh, while he's owning up to it to a degree, he also has attorneys, and your site is now reporting uh, that his lawyers are preparing a lawsuit against the Times uh, over this story. I what can you tell us about yeah, well, that's Charles Harder, who took down Gawker because he has a problem with the First Amendment. And generally, uh, Harvey Weinstein has is very vocally in favor of the First Amendment. I'm not sure. I am not a lawyer, but I don't know how you sue when he's actually admitted in his apology that I behaved badly and I'm going to go get help for it. So I'm not sure what they're going to sue him over, and I doubt that goes anywhere. All right. Sharon Waxman, thank you so much. Always good to have you on the show. Good to see you. Yeah. You are listening to the Bitter Medicine Podcast on KWAZ Radio. So, you, did you listen to what she had to say? I know I did. I, 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 several things struck me in what um, Sharon Waxman had to say uh, concerning Harvey, Harvey Weinstein. 
Um, she claims, by the way, Sharon Waxman is a white woman, if you couldn't tell. She uh, claims that she investigated Harvey Weinstein. She found a lot of these things to be true several years ago in her investigation. But the newspapers that she worked for at the time, which I do believe was the New York Times and the Washington Post, they killed the story. Again, Harvey Weinstein is a white man, rich, big-time producer in Hollywood, so he could afford for those stories to be killed, which is another thing. A lot of people talked about how Bill Cosby was this powerful guy in Hollywood. Well, if he was so powerful, how come he couldn't kill stories? with newspapers. Okay? So, back to Sharon Waxman. She investigated. The stories were killed. She admits that this was a known open secret in Hollywood, Harvey Weinstein's behavior towards women. And even with that said, and everything that's come out, she, as you heard in the video, still considers Harvey a friend. So, you see... They're not abandoning their people. White women are not turning against white men like that. They might call white men out on some bullshit, but they're not going to abandon them. They're not ending and severing friendships and all those kind of things. But we do it all the time. Now, morally, are we correct to do it? Probably. Maybe. But in the system that we live under, in this war that we're in, we don't have the time to do some of that stuff. We have to be united in our fight against the oppression. And let's be honest here. These things like what's going on with Harvey Weinstein and being able to kill stories and pay women off for years and to just utter an apology and it's taken as sincere and, you know, um, this kind of thing. This is all a part of the strategy against us because this is how white men get to continue propping up the system of white supremacy. They don't ever get put away for the things that they do. When they do get put away, it's when it's been some huge, egregious act against other white people's money. That's what happened to Bernie Madoff. Bernie Madoff got sent away because he ripped off a lot of white people. And how long did it take for them to catch him doing it? But again, um, Sharon Waxman goes on to say how people are complicated. She goes on to point out that... um, Harvey Weinstein has a beautiful wife. She goes on to mention how he's at least owning up to what he did and how significant it is that he's owning up. And you know what's the one thing that's not coming out in in either this uh, New York Times article that I read or in the CNN piece I just played um, with um, Sean Waxman, no one's talking about trials. No one's talking about court, because if you touch a woman without consent, that's sexual assault. No one's talking about trying anyone in court. But you did it with Cosby. You tried it with Nate Parker and countless other black men. For decades old accusations, you did do it. No one's talking about it with Harvey Weinstein at all. And so you black folks have the time to be out here playing the straight and narrow game. You see, this is that whole old religion type thing that a lot of black folks are are infected with. And I'm not shitting on religion totally. I, I know it has its place. It's a, it's a great coping mechanism, etc. But you guys are letting 
your your morality, your religious beliefs and stuff. You're letting them destroy yourselves, destroy your children, destroy your people, and destroy your future. Again, when you're playing a game or you're fighting a war, it ain't all about fear. You got to give up that fairness talk and that fairness thinking. And you have to look at what your oppressor does. White society, white supremacy, white racism is getting white men off of the most egregious acts all the time. And throwing the prison on top of black men who do the same or similar acts. And less. So, in that um, article I was reading from the New York Times, there was a a follow-up piece, I think it was this morning, titled... Lisa Bloom, lawyer advising Harvey Weinstein, says she has resigned. Now, for those of you who don't pay attention a lot, um, Lisa Bloom is the daughter of Gloria Allred. Gloria Allred was the uh, woman representing all those people who were accusing Cosby of of uh, drugging and raping them over decades. Lisa Bloom is in the family business as the daughter of Gloria Allred. She also recently, if I remember correctly, she represented um, the black woman, the heavyset black woman who accused Usher, the entertainer, of um, giving her herpes or or actually exposing her to to herpes. Um, This is what they do. They were involved a couple of years ago in the, the rapper Tigger um, and some claims of an underage white girl um, who they say Tigger was sexually inappropriate towards via text messages or something of that nature. Uh, this is what they do. <clears throat> this is what they do. They, they pretend to protect women. But when the perpetrator was an, an, uh, an affluent white super producer in Hollywood, Lisa Bloom was saying ain't there protecting the women who are uh, accusing him of sexual misconduct. She's actually advising the dude. So this um, article by Johanna Barr, um, titled Lisa Bloom, lawyer advising Harvey Weinstein, says she has resigned. That came out this morning. Let me just read this article to you. It says, The lawyer Lisa Bloom said on Saturday that she had resigned as an advisor to Harvey Weinstein, the high-powered film producer facing allegations of rampant sexual harassment. Her announcement came a day after a third of the all-male board of the Weinstein Company resigned as the remaining board members announced that they had hired an outside law firm to investigate the allegations that Mr. Weinstein would take an indefinite leave of absence. Quote, I have resigned as an advisor to Harvey Weinstein, end quote, Ms. Bloom said on Twitter. My understanding is that Mr. Weinstein and his board are moving toward an agreement. Ms. Bloom did not immediately respond to a request for comment. Let me continue. Lanny Davis, another advisor to Mr. Weinstein, is also no longer representing him, according to a person familiar with the matter. Mr. Davis declined to comment or elaborate on the reason for his departure, but the two men had disagreed over how to handle the sexual harassment allegations with Mr. Davis advising a more conciliatory tone and approach than Mr. Weinstein seemed willing to adopt. <clears throat> the allegations of harassment against Mr. Weinstein, which reached back decades, were revealed in an investigation by the New York Times published on Thursday. The investigation found that Mr. Weinstein had settled with at least eight women. Mr. Weinstein apologized for his behavior and acknowledged that it had caused a lot of pain. But he also said that he intends to sue the New York Times for failing to give him enough time to respond to the allegations against him. 
So um, the article then continues to talk about um, Weinstein's claim that he didn't have enough time to um, comment, and it talks about the New York Times representatives who said, you know, they're arguing back and forth saying that, well, we did give you enough time, et cetera, et cetera. Um, The article then continues with the quote, as Harvey has said, it is important for him to get professional help for the problems he has acknowledged, the statement said. Next steps will depend on Harvey's therapeutic progress, the outcome of the board's independent investigation, and Harvey's own personal decisions. Again, no, no legal proceedings are being discussed here. No one's talking about taking him to court. No one's talking about the potential years he could face in jail, as they did with Cosby. But let me keep reading. Ms. Bloom, who had been advising Mr. Weinstein over the past year on gender and power dynamics, said during a television appearance Friday that his behavior has been inappropriate, and she agreed with an interviewer who characterized his report b- reported actions as illegal. Now... They're kind of talking about, well, it's, you know, it's illegal, but no one's talking about pursuing anything. She goes on to say, it's gross. Yeah, Ms. Bloom said. I'm working with a guy who has behaved badly over the years, who was genuinely remorseful, who says, you know, I have caused a lot of pain. She had previously described Mr. Weinstein as an old dinosaur learning new ways. Ms. Bloom has in the past represented women who brought sexual harassment claims against Bill Cosby and the former Fox News host Bill O'Reilly. This year, the Weinstein Company announced that it planned to work on a series of television and film projects about the life of Trayvon Martin based on a pair of books about the teenager, one of which was written by Ms. Bloom. Think about it. The only reason why... She resigned. And let's be very clear about something. Because she resigned does not mean that her her advice is being left alone or being ignored. She already gave them the playbook. The only reason she is resigning is because of how it looks to her bread and butter. You see, she is known for representing women who bring these type of allegations. So now, if she was to go all out and represent uh, or be on his team, on, on Harvey Weinstein's team, it could hurt her and her mother's business of going after all these other guys, mostly black men, when these accusations of, of sexual misconduct come up. But she did her job. And she's in, in, in cahoots with Weinstein in the sense that she wrote a book on Trayvon, which I'm sure is a disaster of a read. That Weinstein was going to produce as a TV series. So she is all in. Do you, do you think she really resigned? Or do you think it's, a, it's just a, you know, to keep up appearances, to keep her business going? So the, the, this idea that we have, this childish mentality we have about fairness and playing fair and, and, and two wrongs don't make a right, we're the only group who does that type of nonsense against our own self-interest. They will point out two wrongs to make a right, but not against their own self-interest. So as you see in these articles that I read, there's almost no mention of pushing this thing to a a trial. There's almost no mention of charges. He's a white guy, he says he's sorry, and uh, damn it, I'm white and I say, so if I'm sorry, I'm sorry. If he says he's sorry, he's sorry. And we accept that as black people. But we don't extend the same to our own people. And I get it. If someone is in fact found guilty of 
sexual misconduct and they're black and, I, and, I, and, I, and you have the proof, I say, put them away. But I'm not going to sit up and throw a black man under the bus on some morality kick. Because I know damn well white society ain't going to do it against their people. And I'm going to play the game. I'm going to fight the battle just the way they fight it. And you should too. Stop playing the game against your own self. Stop shooting your own self in the foot, black people. Because these folks are shooting at you. They ain't going to shoot themselves in the foot. They're shooting at you and you're shooting yourself in the foot. Who's going to win? Who's going to lose? So Harvey Weinstein is a scumbag of a dude, a scumbag of a, of a male doing things that powerful dudes tend to do. And I'm not here to say that it's right or that it's right. I could say that it's it's wrong, but it's what they do. We all know that they do it. Hollywood knows that they do it. It's one of those open secrets. And it's the same thing. I'm sure you go, you look at the Rolling Stones, the Beatles, you look at all those iconic white groups and White actors, they've all done it, I assure you. And it's not more right or or more wrong when they do it versus when black guys do it, but what I will say is, when our black folks do it, within ourselves we can hold them to the fire, but in the public we shall not. Because they don't hold their people to the fire. What do I look like sitting up downing Bill Cosby? As far as I'm concerned, Bill Cosby was a dude, was out there um, doing the same thing Weinstein and them were doing, parlaying their, their position, their money, their notoriety, to at least claiming to use it to help young women. And the same way that they're not talking about going after Weinstein in the court of law is the same way I feel about Cosby, Nate Parker, and anyone else who fits this type of description. But be very clear, white women support white men down to the end. They will complain about treatment from white men to a certain extent, but they'll never side against their white men ultimately. They will always paint them in, in, in nice pictures and talk about how nice they are and the lovely families they have and all the good works that they did. How much good works did Bill Cosby do? How beautiful is uh, Camille Cosby? No one talked about that. Nobody talked about that. Are those benefits that that, that Harvey Weinstein gave money to? Um, like I mentioned, he he helped establish that that chair at Rutgers. Union. Are they going to give back the money to him? Are they going to denounce him like those schools did denounce um, Bill Cosby? So you got to wake up, people. You got to wake up. Stop shooting yourself in the foot during wartime. Because they're shooting at you too. I'm going to end the show here today, but in the comment section, I'm going to pose some questions. Um, Do you think Lisa Bloom uh, quit because of some conscience? Or quit because how it was hurting her bottom line and for what her and her mother do. Do you agree or do you disagree with the assessment that 
that's how Hollywood works, and everyone kind of understands that's how it works. And so Bill Cosby was just playing the same role that was already afforded before he probably even entered Hollywood, just like Harvey Weinstein was doing too. And do you think that Harvey Weinstein should be brought up on charges? Because as far as I know, sexual harassment and unwanted sexual advances are punishable by law. As even uh, Lisa Bloom kind of quickly acknowledged, it's illegal. So again, guys, I just want to point out to you that on one hand, in a fair world, yes, we're supposed to call out everyone, but the world is not fair. You're not just in a world, you're in a war. And the people who are waging the war against you don't play it fairly. So you cannot be trying to be fair in return. That's childish. Only children think about things being fair all the time. Or what's not fair and getting emotional about it and and sticking to this idea that it should be fair, it should be fair. This is the real world. So until next time, thank you for taking a listen to the podcast today. I know I'm a little bit behind schedule in terms of getting podcasts out. I've been busy with some other projects. Um, but I assure you there will be a show... Um, on Columbus Day, we're going to talk about Columbus and the idea of gentrification today. So until next time, thank you for listening. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks for listening to the Bitter Medicine Podcast with your host, Koku. If you like what you just heard, we hope you pass along our web address, bittermedicineblogs.com, to your friends and colleagues, and share our show to all your social media. Be sure to check out our archive section on our website for previous podcasts. This has been a KWAZ radio production. Join us next time for another session of the Bitter Medicine Podcast. Follow us on Facebook at Bitter Medicine Show, Twitter, Bitter Meds, Tumblr, Bitter Meds, Instagram, Bitter Medicine, 